Okay, so don't turn your shoulders in the golf swing. In today's video, we're gonna talk about a topic that's been rather hot here recently. Should you be turning your shoulders in the swing? How do they turn? I'm gonna show you my favorite uh, drill for shoulder turn, what effect it has on everything else, really the feels that go along with that. But before we dive into that, just a quick word from today's video sponsor. Hey guys, we'd like to thank our partners at Municipal. Awesome clothing, super comfortable, can wear everywhere. I'm wearing Municipal whether I'm at home, doing our swing reviews, whether I'm at the golf course doing videos, hanging out at home, out to eat. You've seen some of the shirts that I'm wearing. I got the polos on here. They fit super nice. They're breathable. The Municipal hats that I like, I like the white, gray, and black. They have all kinds of different colors and the patterns that fit super well with highly recommend. We're super pumped to be partners now with Municipal. We can bring you them, show you their stuff. We're gonna put a code down below, ERIC20. Um, we'll put all that in the description down below. Would highly recommend you guys go check them out. All right guys, so don't turn your shoulders in the golf swing. I've had several people send me videos from other uh, people who make YouTube videos around this topic over the past couple of months. I really just wanted to kind of give my take on it and uh, some drills here and feels to go along with this. Now, um, the drill and feel we're gonna talk about comes from one of our teaching partners, Steve Holmes. We coach together on kagornogolf.com and he used it with one of our students recently online and I've been using it and it's a, it's a good visual uh, to feel the shoulder turn. I think where a lot of us get caught up is because we play golf bent over, we need to be turning our shoulders and body, but also be tilted on both sides. So it's kind of weird, right, compared to just standing up and turning. I've seen Steve do these drills, I've seen JT, another one of our coach, do these drills, and I want to share them with you. So kind of big picture, uh, if you haven't seen some of the other guys that are doing videos on this topic, the general idea from what I'm gathering from it is like, hey, you know, maybe necessarily thinking about the shoulders themselves turning uh, isn't the best idea compared to letting your body motions control the turn. And I think that's fairly true. Um, we do need to turn. We need to turn on the way back. We need to turn on the way through. So I want to go through some of those feels, checkpoints, and drills. So here's what I'd like to start off with. What should we feel in terms of turning? If you just stand straight up and down and grab a club here, I've got a seven iron, and I'd just like you to place the club across your shoulders. And first things first, if we just stood up and did not bend over, and we said, hey, during the backswing, let's turn our body away from the target, and then during the downswing follow through, let's turn our body through to the target. For most of us, that should feel pretty easy to do, and that should be fairly simple. Let's see if we can get turned back. Let's see if we can get turned through. Now notice as I'm doing that motion, I bet if you're doing the same thing, if I said turn all the way back, turn all the way through, you're not just turning your shoulders. In fact, you're not even just turning your upper body. You're also getting a lot of turn from your core area. You're getting a lot of turn from your hips. Your legs have a lot of action going on. Even your feet have a lot of action. If I just stand up like this and I turn back, and let's say my goal is to turn about 90 degrees, or get my left shoulder just slightly farther away from the target than my right shoulder, look at where I'm at if I just stand straight up and down. I've got a whole bunch of rib cage rotation. I've got a whole bunch of hip turn. My left knee has kicked in some amount. My heel is up and my pressure is on my left toes. So did I just turn my shoulders in the back swing? No. Did my shoulders move back if I were to draw a line across them about 90 degrees? Absolutely. But what led to that torso turn was a culmination of everything. And so when you're turning back during the backswing, I think that's a fairly good checkpoint. Depends some on the club. But if we say, hey, you should be getting roughly a 90 degree shoulder turn, trying to get your tra lead shoulder slightly farther away from the target than your trail shoulder. I like that. But it's not as though just the shoulders are turning and nothing else, right? I can kind of just turn my shoulders with no, the rest of my body not turning. I probably can get, I don't know, 45 degrees of turn. So I need to incorporate everything here. So what I like to do just standing up first is as I turn back, let your left heel come off the ground a little bit. The pressure should work in towards your left toes. I like the left knee to work in towards the right knee a little bit. And I have a bunch of freedom with my belt buckle during the backswing. So left foot is up on the toes. I'm, I'm okay with the left heel coming up. I like the left knee in a little, the belt buckles in a little, and my left shoulder slightly farther than my right. 
Now, if I were to kind of mimic that same motion on the way through before we bend over, I would just have the opposites. So at the top, my weight's on my left toes and my right heels. As I work through, I reverse that. If I turn through, the weight would be on my right toes and my left heels. So left toe, right heel, right toe, left heel. Left toe, right heel, right toe, left heel. I mentioned during the backswing, I let my left heel come up and my left knee go in. Well, on the way through, I'm gonna let my right heel come up and my right knee go in. See where I'm going with this? I said on the backswing, I like to have my belt buckle turn back towards the camera, you know, 45, 50 degrees. Well, on the way through, I'm gonna have my belt buckle turn towards the target, about a full 90 degrees. So if we just look at turning as that, what your body's supposed to do in a simplistic sense, that's what we're looking for. It's just a level turn back and through like this and incorporating your body motions. It starts with the feet, left toes, right heel, and then reversing it. Then my knees kick into place a little bit along with that. My hips go along with that. My rib cage and core area goes along with it. And so my chest and shoulders are really turning as a byproduct of everything else. I think that's the point of a lot of the message of a lot of coaches is not to get so stuck in the shoulder turn, you're really trying to turn your entire body on the way back and through. Okay, one little add-on piece I forgot to mention, uh, which was part of this whole video, is as I'm turning on the way back, and we'll see if we add you know, maybe one or two pictures of uh, Dustin or Rory, where you can really see the creases in their shirt when they're turning. The, the point that I wanna express is, I talked about the lower body, the rib cage and all that. Another big part of this is your spine, right? And so when you go back, like when you're, I'm doing this turning motion and I'm feeling all of the lower body motions, allowing myself to, um, to turn, I also still want there to be some amount of coiling, right? I still want some amount of resistance, not a lot. I'm not trying to resist my lower body versus my upper, but I want my spine to be turning. And so when you're doing this right, you should feel like, like sort of the engine of this is that middle thoracic part. Like as I'm turning back, I can really feel the middle part of my back turning and on the way through. So it is the feet, it is the knees, hips, pelvis, et cetera. There still be, should, should be a little bit of restriction there with the upper body. We were trying to just get that thoracic turn and get that spine turning a little bit. So I just wanted to add that piece in. That would probably be another feel you're gonna have here to create the shoulder turn during the backswing. Now, what Steve did with the player and was explaining this, because he was kind of getting lost in like this turning idea, was if I do that same drill where I'm going here and here, but now I bend over like a normal golf posture, and let's just say for the sake of simplicity, this is straight up and down. It's like 180 degrees. And I'm bent over, let's say 30, so let's say I'm 145 to 150 degrees. So I'm just bent over like 30 degrees. Now I take the same feel I had here with all of my body and I do the same thing bent over. So what do I feel? I feel the same thing. I feel left toes, right heel. I feel my left knee in. I feel my left belt buckle back. I feel my rib cage turning, all that's feeling going on. Now, because I'm bent over, I'm not just straight up and down with my shoulders. Because I'm bent over now, my shoulders are tilted. So now my butt of the club's pointed, you know, just a little bit outside, maybe a foot outside the golf ball. And I'm tilted over on the way through, the same thing. So I'm keeping that tilt, but I'm just feeling the same motion. So if you're struggling with the concept of turning or what you're supposed to do, I think this is a really good place to start is just start level, part one. Part two is make sure you, you recruit your entire body. Recruit your feet. Recruit your knees. Recruit your pelvis, right? Rib cage, and let the upper body go along for the ride. What you should be feeling when you're doing this as a checkpoint is, let's just say you're hitting a seven iron. Yeah, you, know, you wanna to get to, to about a full 90 degree shoulder turn. That's a good place to live from here if I'm bent over like normal. Good 90 degrees here. And then on the way through, you wanna be able to get back to 90 right, fully turned towards the target. And you know why the turning is important in the first place, I'd say a couple main factors. One would be power generation. So if I walked up and down this range right now and we had players turning 30 degrees, some 45 degrees, so player one turns this much, you know, only 30 degrees, player two, 45, 60, 90, the players who turn the most would hit the ball the farthest. Okay, so don't, certainly don't take the message as like, you don't need to turn, because if you don't turn, you're gonna hit it the shortest, right? 
Uh, are there some anomalies like a John Rahm who can turn short, who's six four, a gazillion? You know, he's he's a monster of a man and still hit the ball a long way. Yes, you and I, not John Rahm. We need big turn to get the power. So I'd say power, big reason why we need turn. And the other thing from down the line would be depth. You know, we say in a lot of the videos, I probably, I've been teaching for 15 years, probably 15,000 lessons. We've had like 6,000 people go through kugornogolf.com. 50% of those people, you know, and the people who slice on the way down, a lot of that starts with a lack of turn. I see this pattern all the time. No backswing turn. Because I didn't turn back, the arms lift. Because I didn't turn back and the arms lift, I come too far over the top. Because I come too far over the top, I've got to early extend, high handle, bad contact, etc. So, I mean, shoot, I would say at least half of the players we're working with, we're talking about turning more on the way back. So please don't take the message from some of these videos as to turn less. You need turn. We need power. And the other part that turn gets, which I'm kind of going over here, is depth. So if you have no turn on the way back and you can pull your arms behind you and not get them stuck, you're in the 0.001%. The reality is we want body turn to get our arms and hands deeper and farther from the ball farther from the ball to create power and deeper so we can swing from inside. So turning helps us hit it farther, helps us swing from the inside. Those would be things we would want. The shortest clubs you have, like a sand wedge, turning is the least important. I don't need a ton of power with a sand wedge. What about a driver? That would be the most important. I need a lot of power. I need to be able to swing from the inside and hit up on it. And so at least a 90 degree shoulder turn. So I think those are some concepts that I want to cover. I like that drill. I like you feeling level to start with bend over, feel the same things. Number two, recruit the lower body. Your feet should move, knees, hips, upper body. And the checkpoints you're looking for on video, how do I know if I did enough? I would look for 90 degrees. I would look for the right shoulder to be slightly closer to the target than the left. And I would focus on those. If you can get to those points, then I think some of the other things become more important that I've seen in a lot of these videos, which is the retraction, protraction, which is the elevation, right? And then the depression of the shoulders. But get to those points first. So shoulder turn, try that out. If you guys enjoyed this video, would appreciate if you can click the like button down below, helps our channel out. Uh, click the subscribe and leave a comment. Always interested in talking with you guys afterwards. what do you think? What do you have questions on? And appreciate you watching.